Tommy with Elevation Every Weekend here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the pros, the cons, and the differences between 26 inch and 27.5 inch fat bike wheels. I have owned and ridden multiple fat bikes, both with 26 inch wheels and 27.5 inch wheels. One of the most asked questions I get on my channel is which one I prefer or recommend and why. First and right off the top, I do want to emphasize there's really not a tremendous difference between one or the other. Tire size and volume actually plays a much bigger factor in overall performance especially looking at the capability in winter conditions but there are some things that vary between the two and a few areas where one wheel size might be better suited for you than the other and I definitely do have a personal preference which I will explain later so as I've already mentioned the biggest variables in traction flotation and rolling resistance will come from tire volume and tire pressure and this is true in either wheel size I've done a number of full-length and short videos explaining in detail how tire size affects performance and showing just about every tire size on the market in side-by-side -side comparisons. So definitely check out the playlist I've linked down in the description below and the pinned comment if you really want to dive deep on this topic. So while tire options are not quite what they were at the height of the fat bike craze several years ago, there are still plenty of options available for both sizes and a range of applications. My first fat bike, which I still own, was a 2014 Shirley Pugsley running 26 by 4 inch tires. And despite being the smallest fat bike size on the market, I found you can actually do quite a bit with it. But ultimately the more backcountry riding I was doing, the bike would get overmatched and I found that I just needed more. So this is where my 2020 Surly Ice Cream Truck came in running a 26 by 4.8 inch wheel and tire combo. And this bike proved to be able to handle the most extreme conditions I faced. In 2021 I bought my first bike running 27.5 wheels and that was a Salsa Bear Grease. Even though that bike had a smaller tire volume of 4 inches, I found that paired with the 27.5 wheel size, the contact patch, flotation, and the traction of the 27 5x4 was far better than the 26x4 I'd used before and actually much closer to that 4.8 inch size that I had in the ice cream truck. This is where I first came to the realization that on a 27.5 wheel I could run a smaller volume tire which would be lighter and faster rolling yet when aired down still have excellent performance in the snow. Most of the tires contact patch when aired down comes from the height of the tire which translates directly into the length of the contact patch not the width and if this is a concept you're not familiar with like like I said, definitely check out the previously mentioned playlist with all those videos. So let's run through some of the overall pros and cons of each wheel size. So starting with 26 inch wheels, you can get the lightest possible wheel and tire combination running 26 inch. On the Borealis Crestone I was testing, I had 26 inch head carbon wheels running 4.6 inch cake eaters. And that combination proved to be amazingly fast and responsive, yet still highly capable in backcountry snow. At the other end of the spectrum, a 26 inch wheel with a five inch tire, like I recently fitted to my Surly Ice Cream truck, will give you the most possible tire volume you can have, which can be beneficial in extreme low pressure riding as it gives you additional sidewall volume and additional rim protection. If you're a short rider or riding smaller size bikes, a 26 inch wheel will probably be an overall bike fit for your setup. And last, I've always found 26 inch fat tires to be about the easiest tires to remove or install on a wheel. As for a few cons, some fat bikes are limited to tire clearance based on frame limitations, which can also limit you to only running a 26 inch wheel as well. So definitely something to be cognizant of. And as touched on for the same size tire volume a 26 inch wheel will have less overall traction and performance than the same tire volume in a 27.5 wheel Moving over to the 27.5, let's talk about some pros here. So basically, as I just mentioned with the cons of the 26 inch wheel, the overall larger wheel size of 27.5 provides a larger contact patch and therefore traction in a similar or even smaller tire volume than on 26 inch. The taller wheel size also will provide better rollover on terrain than the smaller wheel. This is just a matter of physics. For a one wheel solution for year round riding, it can actually add more versatility to the bike in variable conditions. It's fast rolling and responsive on dirt and trails and can still be capable in backcountry snow. And for a taller rider on a larger bike, it can also provide for a better bike fit. And lastly, the absolute tallest, most massive combination you can get on the fat bike is a 27.5 wheel with a 4.5 inch tire. As for a few cons of 27.5, I've actually found them a little more difficult to remove or install to wheels than 26 inch wheels. But overall, they are still pretty easy to work with, especially compared to things like road bikes. 27.5 tires generally have less sidewall than the 26 inch counterparts. So when you're air down, it can introduce a little more potential for rim damage, especially if you're running lightweight, high performance wheels. And lastly, I found they tend to be a little more expensive than 26 inch tires, but that's not always the case. So as I mentioned, I definitely do have a preference 
While I still do ride and enjoy my 26 inch wheel Surly bikes, when I spec'd out my Borealis Flume, I spec'd it with 27.5 inch wheels. I think in part my long experience riding 29 inch mountain bikes made me prefer and a little more comfortable riding the taller wheel and tire combinations, and 27.5 definitely runs closer to that. For me, I prefer the aesthetics and the overall height and performance attributes of the 27.5 wheel size. Having ridden the mid volume 27.5 by 4.3 inch Tureen Yippie Kaye tires extensively, it's proven to be a combination that rolls fast in the dirt, has amazing traction in any terrain, and when aired down has been unstoppable in backcountry snow. It really has proven to be an ideal option for my overall performance requirements for my fat bike, and I'll be fitting them back on my flume real soon for the winter season. That said, I did just recently fit some Tureen 26 by 5 inch Johnny 5s to my Surly ice cream truck, and they are definitely an awesome performer in the worst possible conditions. Although, especially on that bike, they definitely require a mindset of just tractoring along. That can still be a ton of fun too, it's not always about the fastest rate of pace. In closing, I did ride that Borealis Crestone I had for long term testing in both 26 inch and 27.5 wheels, and while those 26 inch carbon head wheels were really impressive. I ended up choosing to mostly ride the bike with the 27.5 head aluminum wheels, which just really made the bike feel right for me. So if you have any preferences of your own or specific experiences that make you prefer one wheel size over the other, add your thoughts to the conversation in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, drop a like down below. It does really help out the channel. And if you want to continue to follow all of my fat bike content, definitely subscribe to the channel. It's free for you, only takes one click, and ensures you won't miss any of my upcoming content. We've had our first significant snowfall of the season, so lots more fat biking is on the way. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.